Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home, which is by the lake just outside of Toronto in Canada. I'm filming in a different spot in my house today because it has been gray and rainy for weeks and I moved to a spot where there was more light, not to mention my studio space is a complete disaster after the last week or two, but I will get into those details in a minute. If you are looking for me elsewhere, you can find me on Instagram as Sandy by the Lakeside. I'm on Ravelry as Sandy Ran, and I try to keep my projects updated even though I'm not on Ravelry too much. And I have a website which is bythelakeside.com where I sell project bags and leather accessories. So I'm really excited to be podcasting today. It feels like it's been a really long time. I think it's been maybe a month. But if you follow me on Instagram, you will know why. It is mostly because I was a vendor at the Toronto Knitters Frolic, which took place last week, and it was so much fun. There was a lot of preparation, but everything went really smoothly, and I had such a great time. I'm really, really happy that I participated, and it was just a really great event. If you were there, if you were local and you visited, thank you so much. It was so nice to be in a knitting space where there were so many people that had common interests, and it was so nice when people came into my booth and said hello. I think I'll get into more details about the frolic a little bit later when I share um, some of my purchases from the day, but I think I will start with some knitting. After the frolic and after just a really busy month preparing for the frolic, but also um, our lives just seem to be really busy right now. I think it's one of those seasons where kids are busier, we're all busy, and I haven't been knitting very much. So I've been craving it, and I knew that as soon as the frolic was over, I wanted to pick up my knitting again. So I've slowly been doing that this week, and I started with socks. And I have a lot of socks. I think I've talked about it before. I have a whole big basket, and my friend Eric came over on Monday and we had just coffee and some knitting, which was really nice, but we went through all of my socks and I basically picked the one, first and second ones that I would really like to finish based on the season and where I am in the project. So the first one I took out of my big basket of socks is in one of my bags, the patchwork bag. And it's a favorite of mine. It is a scrumptious pearl yarn. It is called Pool Party. It's really, really pretty. And I'm on the first sock, but because I love the colors so much and summer is coming, I thought this would be the most fun to pick up. So here is the first sock, and I cast this one on when I was in Cape Cod, September or October this past year. And so it brings me really good memories and I was on the heel flap, so I finished the heel flap and turn, and I am on the gusset now. So I feel like as soon as I get that gusset done, I will just have this as easy knitting, and I'm really excited because these colors are so pretty. And they're really nice um, while the weather is so gloomy. The sun is coming out just a little bit, but it's been so gray here that it's been a little depressing. Everyone is tired, and we're all waiting for better weather. So this is my sock. I have not felt like knitting socks at all for what feels like months, probably since Christmas. And I think I do that sometimes. I just lose interest. I have problems staying um, focused on projects because I get super excited. But I think I'm going to really enjoy knitting on these. So I'm looking forward to having an easy sock project and soccer season or outdoor soccer season is starting. So that would be really great to bring along to soccer games. So that is my sock project or my small project and I'm still trying to stick to the three projects at once. My second project you've seen before too and I've just been doing a row here and a row there when I can. It is the Kate's poncho which I'm still in love with. It's beautiful. 
doesn't seem like a ton of progress, but this is basically all the knitting that I have done in the last month. Just this. Here it is, and it's in this beautiful, nice and knit color, which is called Autumn. It's really, really pretty. And I really want this piece to wear. So I'm carrying on with this one, even though I have a lot of other things kind of distracting me. Um, this is also a really um, kind of simple knit, so it's really good to just pick up and drop whenever you get a chance. I think I dropped my yarn, but I will show it to you in the cake. It's beautiful. So I'm enjoying that. And I hope to have that done pretty soon because I have a lot of other knitting that is tempting me. And I'm gonna share some of it because I'm trying to stick to those three projects, but it's really, really difficult right now. Okay, I cast on a new project. This is gonna be my sweater whip in my group of three. I've put my little cabin sweater aside because it is a little bit more of a heavier sweater and I'll pick that up next. And I think this one is gonna be a little bit quick, I hope. So I put it in one of my signature bags. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a knit along with my friends, Christina from Chelsea Yarns and Meg from Woolen Cookies podcast. She gave me this pin. So I just have these pins on there to remind me of my friends. Now Christina just finished hers. So I'm a little behind, but that's okay because I was waiting for my yarn. I am going to be making the Soldatna crop I'm sure you've all seen it. It's really, really popular right now. It's by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. And Christina from Chelsea Yarns helped me pick out some of her beautiful colors. This is all I have cast on so far. I just cast on a day or two ago and that's all I've managed because I've been so busy. But I'm really excited. It is a beautiful sweater and I'm gonna show you the colors. So they're all Chelsea Lux DK. This is the first color, which I've started with. Oh, I should tell you the names. I can find all my bands. This is Sunflower. This is a favorite. It's Pink Peony. It's blowing out just a little bit. There we go. So I think this is gonna be sort of the main body color for me. And then a lot of the color work and detail will be with these two colors. One is Eucalyptus, and this one I think is Mini Mobius. I will check the band in a second, but let's see if I can do that. There we go. Beautiful, love them. They're so gorgeous. So thank you so much, Christina, for helping me pick these out. Um, she was so great at sending a couple of pictures and making sure that every time I changed my mind, she didn't get annoyed with me because picking colors is one of my favorite things to do. I love it, but they have to be perfect. Knitting takes me a long time and it's not an inexpensive hobby, so I really wanna make sure that it's exactly what I want and this is perfect, I love it. So this is going to be my main focus right now, I think. When I'm at home and it's a crop, so it's not a very big sweater. It's got short sleeves. So I think I can get this one done and then pick up one of my, um, and I say one of, because I don't know if it'll be the little cabins next, because there's another sweater on my mind. I've got sweaters on my mind. I don't know, it's not very, um, typical of me, but I'm already thinking about what I want in my wardrobe for next fall. So that is my Soldatna crop, which is super exciting. I will show you another project that is dream knitting that relates to sweater knitting. So I've got it in this beautiful fringe town bag. If you watch my podcast regularly, you know, uh, or you might remember that I had the black one as a gift at Christmas. And it's beautiful, but I just, I wasn't picking it up. I wasn't using it. 
and I was always wishing that I had ordered, I don't know if this is called caramel, whatever it is, I love it. Kind of wished I purchased this one instead. Well, my friend Eric from the Sticks Plus Twine podcast sent me a message one day because he had the brown one and he was wishing that he had the black one. So he messaged me and asked if I would ever be interested in swapping and I jumped on that because yes. So we swapped out bags and I am so happy. So, so happy. I've already got a couple of cute pins on there. It's really, really nice. So I had a visit to the Knitting Loft, which is a beautiful yarn shop in Toronto that I love. And um, that's where Eric and I swapped our bags and I decided I wanted sweaters quantity of yarn for the Ingle sweater, which is also by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks. I wanted Farmer's Daughter yarn and I knew they had it. And so I picked out this beautiful color. It looks a little bit orangey there, but it's a really interesting kind of coral. I think it's coral. It is called Monarch. It's the Juicy DK. Maria at the Knitting Loft was so sweet with my crazy um, antics of going through probably every DK selection in the store. And then I picked up this beautiful kind of burgundy brown to do the color work. I don't have the uh, pattern printed to show you the picture right now, but the Ingle sweater is a beautiful sweater. It's um, it's all solid with a little bit of color work up at the top and I, I think it's so pretty and it's got beautiful sleeves. So I'm really looking forward to this also. This one is Primrose Classy DK and the color is Henna. Not sure if it's picking up, but they're really pretty together. So that is some dream knitting. I am not caking this up until I finish my soldana and then I decide if I want to move on to the little cabin or this one because I am really going to try to stick to the one sweater at a time. But there are so many beautiful designs out right now and they're just coming out every day. There's a new one by Andrea Mowry. Um, it has stripes. I forget what it's called, but I love it. I also love her um, LYS. Um, cardigan that she did for um, La Bien Amis. beautiful color oh my gosh there's so many so many sweaters right now I have to take a breath but still three projects that's it but my dilemma is this I've got my sock I've got my soldatna and I've got the poncho but at the same time found this project that I've shown many times and oh, now I'm at a loss for what it's called again. I'll have to look it up and put it on the screen. But I started this last year. It's in a beautiful Quince & Co. linen. It is um, the Kestrel. Let's see, there we go. Kestrel by Quince & Co. And this color is Quill, number 521. And it's this beautiful shawl that I think would be perfect for summer. I'm only about a third, I think a third of the way, but I know it's kind of, I'm kind of at that part where it's getting wider and wider, so it's taking a bit longer. But once I get to the center, which won't be long, I will be decreasing and it should go a lot faster. So this one is tempting me. I might have to put my poncho aside to try to get this done, but this is where I get kind of um, frozen by decisions and then I can't decide what to do and nothing gets done. So as I'm showing you, I think this one is going to have to come out because it would be perfect for the summer months. Really, really nice to have this one. And the poncho would probably be better towards the end of the summer, even fall, based on our weather here anyways. So maybe that's what I should do. Decisions, decisions. Knitter's problems. So that is my knitting um, for right now. I have so many other projects 
that have been started and I even have a big basket. This one sits in my family room and it's just in case I forget about them. They're, they are my favorite ones that have been cast on and they're not to be forgotten. So that's where this was, that beautiful linen shawl. I've got my girl's best friend in here, which I also really love. And then I have my tiny tassels in this one, which is also a super fun and easy knit and I really want to do that one too. I just don't knit very fast, so it's becoming a problem again. I'm trying to control the situation, focus on the ones that I have, and just start getting some projects done. I think with all this good yarn and all these beautiful projects started, all of a sudden I am just gonna start finishing projects and feel so good about it and have all these beautiful handmade items. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, so that's it for knitting. I'm going to talk about a couple of things I've purchased next. One of them was um, the beautiful yarn for the Ingalls sweater. And because I've been so busy and haven't been knitting very much and just sewing for the shop and for the frolic, I started to notice a couple of items of clothing that people had sewn in the past and one was a new one and patterns and they were really pretty. So I decided to buy them because sometimes patterns sell out. And even though I'm not really one to make my own wardrobe, it's kind of nice to have the patterns in case I want to this summer. And these two in particular were really um, enticing me to maybe sew for myself again. So the first one I picked up was the Wixton Shift Dress on Top sewing pattern. And I really, really like both the top and the dress. So I was excited about this. And even if I don't get to it um, right now, that's okay. And then I also got from So Liberated, the metamorphic dress pattern. And this is another one that I have seen a lot of Instagram posts on and I really, really like the shaping of it, especially the one with this curved hem. And it looks super cute with like leggings or layering over other pieces. So I thought that would be a nice one to have also. I decided to purchase this beautiful necklace after seeing my sweet friend Jules from So Sweet Violet. She showed it on a podcast it was quite, a, quite a while ago, like maybe a couple of months ago. And um, I favorited the shop and I just finally did it. I thought it could be um, a Mother's Day present to myself, but it came so quickly. It is this beautiful necklace from, the shop is called Bed of Roses. And you may have seen this before, but it's basically on a leather cord. And all of these beautiful charms are progress keepers, um, there's stitch markers here, let's see if you can see that. And some of them are even uh, personalized. So she put an S for my name here. One of my favorite words, it's not my word of the year this year, but it was last year. And it's one of my favorite words was wonder. And she squeezed that in there for me. And a star on another one. It's just beautiful. Her work is absolutely beautiful and she was so kind and was so generous that she sent me an extra and I've been wanting to do a really great giveaway. I am so, so close to 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube and also on Instagram and I'm very, very close. So as soon as I hit that mark, I was planning on doing a really, really nice giveaway. Um, I'm thinking of doing a bag and some yarn and now I'm going to include a beautiful necklace from Bed of Roses that one of you will get to enjoy. I really, really love it. It's just long, it's, I think it's really nice. And she was so wonderful to communicate with. Her shipping was so fast and I highly recommend if you've been on the fence to go for it because it's just beautiful. She has so many different variations on in her Etsy shop. So let me just grab her card here so I can get this right. She 
packaged everything so beautifully. And she even gave a coupon code, which was so, so nice. So I think I'm going to, um, I don't have it with me. I'm going to share it when I do the giveaway. I'm hoping that it will be soon actually, because like I said, it's really, really close to that number. And I would like to get into the habit of podcasting a little more regularly because it actually makes me want to knit more. If I'm knitting more regularly and podcasting more regularly, I seem to want to knit for the podcast, which is fine by me because it helps me accomplish more. But um, let's see what it says here. It actually doesn't say, but it's Bed of Roses on Etsy. I will put it up on the screen. And there's her beautiful card. So thank you so much, Catherine. I love it. And honestly, the packaging, so beautiful. So I cannot wait to share one of these with one of you when I do the giveaway soon. I got another few things while I was at the Frolic last week, so it's a great time to take a moment and talk a bit about that. What a day. It was so much fun, so much preparation went into it, but I was so excited to be a vendor and have my own booth at the Toronto Knitters Frolic. Incredible experience. Everything went smoothly, which was kind of a shocker. It was our first time, so we were a little bit overprepared, but I think um, the venue and the event was so well organized that it just, everything went so smoothly and the volunteers were amazing and helpful and we just had a great, great time. If you visited the booth and said hello or just passed through, thank you so much. It was so nice to be a part of something like this in Toronto because it gave me a chance to meet all of these amazing people who are from either Toronto or the surrounding cities. It was just really, it's hard to explain, but it was just a really great day. I mean, I smiled from the moment I got there until probably my head hit the pillow that night. It was just a great, great experience and I'm so thankful. So many people um, contributed and helped me along the way, not just that day, but just leading up to it. I had so many great people. Um, Glenn, my husband, did a lot of behind the scenes work for me, figured out the whole cashing out situation and he was the cashier and he was a lot of fun, helped me move everything. My friend Sandra had come by quite a few times in the last month just helping out with things and making sure I was okay. And she, st she stayed at the booth the whole day and was just awesome. She's such a great friend. And I had so many other friends just constantly checking in on me and my kids were helping. It was really good. It was a great experience. I would definitely do it again and um, picked up some really good stuff too. It was really packed, very busy. It was a great, great event. I kind of wished that I had a little bit more time. I think because it was my first time being a vendor, I didn't want to leave the booth too much. Um, but I did manage to squeeze away to get to the bathroom once or twice and I picked up a couple of things. Not too much, but I went, I was just walking through um, one of the sections and I saw the Rose Haven Yarn Shop and Leslie and I picked up the new issue of Making Magazine because I realized my subscription has ended and I forgot to renew it. So I'm excited to um, have this one because when I start collecting a magazine, if I like it, I don't wanna miss any issues. So that was really nice. I knew that I wanted this ahead of time, so I went to the Soak booth. I really like their flatter spray. So I picked up another one in Lacey and I picked up a mini one in Fig, which I think is actually my favorite one now. So this is just a spray. I don't use it every time I iron, but if you ever feel like you kind of want to freshen something up, like a fabric, or um, instead of just using water from your iron, I really like these. They just add something a little bit special, and I really wanted to get this clip. So basically, I saw it on their Instagram feed. You clip it onto the side of your ironing board and it sits in it. So those are all from the Soak booth. And I picked up a bag. 
not my own bag, but I can't help it. When I go to Zigzag Stitches, I always find something that I really love there. So Catherine is the maker behind Zigzag Stitches and she's lovely. I got a chance to chat with her a few times. And this was one of her small, she calls it a boxy tote, I think, a boxy bag. So this is the small one. It's perfect for socks. And I love that it has a handle and it could just pop into a really large bag. And I love this fabric. It's a Rifle Paper Company, which is totally my thing. So I'm really, really happy with this purchase. I love it. Her bags are so well made and I love the little bead that she puts on her zipper pulls. So I'm super excited to have that. And that's basically all I got. I didn't get yarn. I didn't really have time and I have plenty of projects to work on. So that didn't happen, but there were some beautiful, um, beautiful booths right around me. Um, and because I haven't been going to the shows for a super long time or been like a lifestyle knitter for very long, um, I'm not really aware of a lot of the hand dyers that are local. And it was a really great experience to meet so many people and they were all so amazing always smiling always friendly it's a great great experience i finally got to meet my friend andrea who is from andre knits a lot i just wanted to check it that i said it correctly i have been friends with andrea online for as long as i can remember she's one of the first people that i became friends with online and she's been a supporter of me and my shop from the beginning and I saw her, she came to my booth and she had the most beautiful shawl on. And I immediately said, what is this shawl? And it's a new design of hers. And she had these beautiful cards that she was giving. And it is called the Mariners or Mariners Daughter Shawl by Andre Nitzelot. I'm gonna put it on the screen. And she has these beautiful little flowers here because they are a part of her shawl. So if you get a chance, check out her Instagram or check out the Ravelry page and the pattern because it was beautiful and it's definitely going into my queue. At some point, I will make it. It's almost got a mesh-like feeling to it and just felt almost nautical to me. So I really, really liked that. And I just wanted to mention one other person that came to my booth. There were so many. I wish I could mention all of you and say a personal hello to each and every one of you and a thank you. But there was one lovely lady from her handle on Instagram is always with yarn. Her name is Michelle. She came from Ithaca, New York, and she gave me this beautiful card and some homemade jams or jellies and I was blown away. She was so lovely, and I think you watched the podcast, Michelle, so thank you so very much. Your present or your gift was so unexpected, and look at these beautiful labels. Oh my gosh, how lucky am I? I'm gonna make some, the next time I make fresh bread, I am definitely going to pull these out and have them on um, like a nice crusty bread. A beautiful, beautiful card with a really nice handwritten note inside. Thank you so much, Michelle. It was so nice to meet you and thank you for coming to my booth. The last thing I'm going to talk about are some of my favorite things. There's a little bit of a theme here. Um, it has to do with being organized and a new journal and pouches because I love them. So. A few weeks ago, while I was really, really busy getting ready for the frolic, I got totally inspired by some friends, Maria and Lori, who are um, amazing journaling ladies. And if you are into planners and journals, you should check them out. I'm gonna put their Instagram um, names on the screen for you. They were both starting a bullet journal and they got me totally sucked into the whole thing. And I've done a bullet journal in the past, but not like this. And so I got really excited and just jumped in. I ordered a new notebook and a new leather cover from Sojourner, which I love. It is a B6 Slim. It's the navy leather with a designer pocket. 
and it's called a folio. So you just slide your book into it. And I haven't been able to do much yet, but I have high hopes to use this as a bullet journal, but without all the calendar kind of planning because I really love my Hobonichi for planning and that's not gonna change. But because I work from home, and I think I just, I'm totally thinking of the, always thinking of the next thing and what's ahead and new ideas and inspiring things. So I really wanted to use this as a kind of a catch-all book, almost a brain dump for lists of things, like even organizing which knitting projects I want to do next. Um, and then I'll put an index so I can find everything really easily. So I'm excited to jump into this, but because I started that, I started organizing new pouches and it helps when you are a bag and pouch maker because it's easy to shop your own shop. So I grabbed one of my large pouches, which I absolutely love. And this is my bullet journal pouch. I've posted a picture of it on Instagram, but basically I just put the pens and markers and tools that I need just for that bullet journal so that it's really easy. I can just grab this, grab my book, sit on the couch if I want to, or take it up to my bedroom, whatever I want. Everything's in one spot. I don't have to go through my entire supply cart or my desk supplies and all that stuff. So that's, um, that just makes me feel more organized and it kind of inspires me to do more stuff. I have a little mini pouch like that um, near my, gratitude journal in my bedroom. So if I wanna do anything in the gratitude journal, which has been a little bit neglected, I can just grab the mini pouch and do that too. And with all of the new organization of knitting projects, I started that, this new bag and kinda of set up this bag. It just got me inspired to set up a new notions pouch too. So I grabbed my little signature pouch so you can see, really see the difference. This one can fit a ton of stuff. I actually use one of these um, for all of my DPNs, which are still in the package, and they all fit in here really, really nicely. Oops, piano. This one is really small and compact, but I love it for just putting in your tote bag. So this is the size that I have in my bedroom for my gratitude journal supplies, but I just started to throw together a little notions pouch in here and I've got my scissors, I've just got a pen. I've got the essentials for any notions pouch, which is a lip balm and a hand cream. And I've got some washi tape, a little crochet hook for any dropped stitches and some stitch markers. And I will probably add a few more things to it, but that's what I started. And I just, I feel like with soccer season coming and wanting to do things in the backyard, this just makes it really easy to grab whatever I'm working on. If it's knitting, I need my notions. If it's journaling or bullet journaling, I can grab whatever pouch I need for that. I even thought this would be perfect too, to just dump inside of another bag and drop it and go. And it's just making me feel excited to do more things and squeeze those things into my life because I recently watched a video on YouTube where someone was saying, um, everyone has 24 hours in the day. It's how you use them and how you prioritize. So if I don't make time to do the things that make me happy, they will never get done. And so I think setting up, it sounds ridiculous, but setting up bags and pouches just gets me more excited and motivated and then I can grab it and do it really easily. So that is the method behind my madness. I've got bags everywhere around me, pouches everywhere. Um, but I'm super excited. I've just about um, finished everything from the frolic, put everything away. Shipping is actually waiting right over there to be dropped off. I'm gonna do that next. And then I just have to tackle my sewing room studio, clean it up and get started again. I'm really excited about what's to come next and the summer months. And yeah, some knitting. I'm really excited. I'm so 
so motivated to knit that I am super excited that I will be hopefully podcasting along the way because then I have content. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you are all doing well and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.